Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in crypto and bringing on to bite-sized pieces. So today, just as the thumbnail suggests, we're going to take a look at the case for a bear and a bull crypto market coming in October, leading into November and December, when we will take a look. And what we need to look at is just to, uh, we really want to hope for the best, but uh, expect the worst or prepare for the worst. And for that, we're going to take a look at a case for the long bear market or an extended bull market. We're going to take a look at factors such as uh, Ripple, institution adoption, ETH 2.0. And last, we're going to finish up with, uh, I think, one of the scariest things, uh, retirement. And a new study that was out that uh, will probably shock you into what it actually says. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. Today, it is Monday, and we are down yet again. Not that much, uh, just about about a point or so, but we're at 1.91 trillion. The sentiment's looking pretty good. Bitcoin daily sentiment is 71 out of 100. That's pretty darn bullish. That's the most bullish I've seen in quite some time, actually. Daily sentiment is about 54, and this is from Trade the Chain. If you want to check this out, it's all about sentiment analysis. It scrapes all the interwebs and the uh, different blog posts. It has a direct API integration to uh, Twitter. So uh, there's a link in the description. It looks something like this. And you can check that out. So let's take a look at uh, what's going on with the individual coins and which ones are up, and which ones are down today. Like you don't, if you as if you don't know, Bitcoin about the same, 43 Ethereum around. Uh, geez, it dropped below 3,000. Look at that, 29.96. Not too bad. 4% down for Cardano. Nothing but great news on Cardano. And look what happens. Down 4%. What are you going to do? Maybe uh, maybe some more great announcements. <laughs> we'll push it lower. Who knows? Solana is up 3%. That's pretty great. Terra, uh, right, riling right up 10%. 1% for Algorand. Good projects there and 6%. But if you notice in the one hour, looking pretty pretty green somewhat. Maybe we're seeing reversal and so on and so forth. So that's the market. Uh, in honesty, uh, quite boring. And uh, really what it comes down to is that September, we all knew it was going to be a bad month and it did not disappoint. Let's take a look at what we have as far as this case for a long bear market and really just jump in. So this was a pretty good uh, article and it talks about the significant factors as to lengthen this, they say crypto market crash, but in reality, it's a, it's a bear market. And when you read this, you have to kind of take a look at all different angles as far as what it is. So if we scroll down here, oh, let me come back at. So really what's going on is we're going to take a look at some factors that can really play a big part. And the one that I think is one of the most important that uh, the XRP army has been talking about quite a lot is the Ripple lawsuit. And it makes a lot of sense because and it states here very sim sim simply, it makes a total sense. If the SEC wins the suit, if the SEC wins the suit, it could hint that it has the upper hand in the decision-making process of crypto adoption in the US, and the long-term result could be a pullback from institutions and investors. I think that's partially correct. Really, really what, what it comes down to is, is if, if the SEC wins, then it has to actually establish what a security is, which Gary Gensler has not given any clarity so far. So really, if, if they win, we were kind of going in that direction. Anyhow, I personally don't believe it, that it's going to be a slam dunk win for the SEC. I don't think they're going to win, period. I think what's going to happen happen, the most likely outcome is that Ripple, uh, Brad Garlinghouse and uh, Larson, they're, they're going to just have to um, pay a fine and move on just like EOS did. On the uh, other hand, if they went out right, then it will be game on. XRP will skyrocket in price. It will be probably a top five crypto. I know that's here. Uh, heresy but i think that's what's going to happen and then everything else is going to go up like a rocket ship so hope i'm rooting big time for those guys and then down here it talks about there's really one two three three big things as far as like bullish catalysts and these can be bullish or bearish in all honesty so regulatory clarity and if you want to know what the clarity is for Gary Gensler on the SEC. We did a video on that where they came before the uh, House Committee or uh, for the Senate Committee on Banking, and they pretty much just said this: "Look, everything's a security." That's what Gary pretty much said, and uh, that's the way they are going down for. Also, institutional adoption, Ethereum merge are major bullish catalysts. So when they're talking about this, let's just stick with the institutional adoption. And I think we can all agree there's a lot of that going on right now. There's a lot of different institution adoption of what's happening. But I really do think that behind the scenes, if we don't remember what's happening in this space, we're kind of just kind of stuck looking at that those, those prices, the actual market and go, oh, well, it's down, so it's not uh, worth too much. Remember, it's not about the price. It is about the value of the actual asset. And I can tell you right now, uh, this is a pretty good asset. So if we take a look at institutional investment, our institutional adoption, here's a nice little snippet story. 
where uh, Morgan Stanley, yeah, that, those guys, doubled down on the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Uh, the bank owns 58,000 shares, up from 28,000 last quarter. And of course, look, if we would have gotten this news in 2017, uh, the market would have skyrocketed. But it seems like people just have this memory where they just kind of have amnesia like, oh, this is going on. This is adoption. This is actually good news. Now, on top of that, as far as institutional adoption, uh, we can hear there's a, a little report from JP Morgan where it states institutional investors are preferring Ether over Bitcoin. And uh, this is an analysis of the uh, CME, futures buying activity by JP Morgan. Bitcoin futures prices and spot prices had weakened and shifted from positive to negative in September. Uh, the difference between the uh, Ether future prices and spot prices remained positive and actually increased uh, during this month. So even though we've had a pretty cruddy month as far as crypto, we're doing pretty well as far as like for institutional adoption. Now, don't get your hopes up so much because, you know, these guys, we, we consider these guys the smart money. And of course, they're the ones that front run everything, but they're not. And uh, here's a great example. Uh, this is from uh, <laughs> CNBC. This was back in 2017. And it says, uh, I like this one. It says, Jamie Dimon says, if you're stupid enough to buy Bitcoin, you'll pay the price one day. This is on October 13th and updated on October 16th. 2017. What are they talking about here? Well, yeah, that's what he said before. And then today he comes out and says, you know what? Uh, the Bitcoin price could 10x in the next five years. That's Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase. So again, uh, don't consider these guys the end all be all on the smart money because really what they're doing is they think they've got it. But in reality, some of the smartest people are already in the crypto space. And I think other people are being left behind. So that's just how, that's just the way I see it. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then to move on with this case, Ethereum. And it talks about the second phase of the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade, AKA the merge, which we'll see the Ethereum network makes the switch. The beacon chain as its consensus mechanism remains another possible bullish trigger. It's bullish or it's bearish. If we have any more delays, which you've already had a couple, Ethereum, uh, they do delay here and there, but they're trying to do a pretty darn uh, difficult thing. If this gets delayed, then I think this could actually push us out to an elongated, uh, more bearish scenario for Ethereum. However, I will say this. If we take a look at Ethereum, this is from uh, ethereum.org, and it talks about uh, what's going on as far as the, the um, conversion from Ethereum to e Ethereum 2.0. And just so you know, it talks about the beacon chain. We're already here. It's actually three levels. The beacon chain uh, brings staking to Ethereum. We're already, we're already there. Lays the groundwork for future upgrades. And will eventually coordinate the new system. The merge. And you see down here the estimate. Estimate. 2021. We've got three months to go. So I hope they pull this one off. The mainnet Ethereum will need to merge with the beacon chain at some point. This will enable staking for the entire network and single the end of energy intensive mining. And you have to remember one thing, because I think there's gonna be more stories coming about this, is that ETH 2.0 hasn't hit its mark. And it's not gonna hit its mark until 2022, when shard chains come about. Shard chains will expand Ethereum's capacity to process transaction and store data. The shards themselves will gain more features over time, rolled out in multiple phases. This is in 2022. I do not see ETH 2.0 uh, coming in until late 2022, all the way until 2023. And that's just how uh, I see things. And unfortunately, some people will say that's that's uh, awful, but whatnot. But look, as as bad as it is, uh, for uh, as we talk about Ethereum 2.0, and it's really not that bad. If you really think about it, I want to take a look at this. This is from uh, friends of the show, CryptoQuant. And this is all exchange reserves for Ethereum. And I want you to notice one thing here, and that is, see this bluish, purplish line right here? Very nice, very nice line. Uh, this is the exchange reserve. So when you have a lot of Ethereum on the exchanges, this means they're like, hey, we got a lot of product here, come on in and buy it. And uh, people are like, sure, uh, I'll do that. And they're buying it like crazy. This is back in 2020. And then the reserves would dip, then it would come up. The less that the exchanges actually have as far as a reserve, usually the price will go up because there's the same demand or maybe more demand and less supply. And here we kind of bounce around a little bit and boom, big one. And then all of a sudden 
we have a little bit more as far as like uh, the supply is back on the exchanges. Then it goes down, price goes up. So on. But look where we're at now. And this is the odd thing. This is the very odd thing is that we are dipping into some pretty low marks here as far as like the reserves. Ethereum only has on the, on the all exchanges, all exchanges, 18 million. Up here, we're looking at 24, almost 24 million down here, 18 million. And it's only getting worse. So when we think about the bullish cases, well, just for Ethereum looks pretty darn good. What about what about Bitcoin as far as like the exchange flows? Well, if we take a look at that, Bitcoin itself, and this is all the exchanges as well. Look up here. Look how much Bitcoin they had uh, back. Gosh, when is this? Uh, this was September. This is a year ago. That's a ton. Then, of course, we go down here and it kind of falls. A little bit different patterns, but I want you to notice one thing. Where are we at right now? We don't have a lot. There's 2.3 million, roughly, Bitcoin on all the exchanges, and the price has been kind of fluctuating. It really didn't help with that stupid China story and that FUD story about them banning for the 20,000th time. But uh, here we are. So when we take a look at supply and demand, I think this is quite a bullish case. And that's just how I see it. Get back to the story. We have to, we talk about the bullish. Let's talk about the bearish real quick about what could potentially happen. So with the last part here is that the possible long-term bearish catalyst that could tank the market. It makes a lot of sense. Bearish factors include the delay of a Bitcoin ETF. So says this one. So far, there have been more than 12 Bitcoin ETF filings. Me personally, I don't care about a Bitcoin ETF. We talked about this on the DCA show. And uh, I've been hearing about this forever and it never comes to pass. So if, if, we, if we get another one that doesn't come through, I don't think it's going to make a difference that much. What will make a difference is if it does go through and people say, well, who cares? You've really got uh, Bitcoin by proxy in uh, MicroStrategy and Grayscale. You can get into it through the business. I mean, just going through the, the, all the Bitcoin that they buy, but it's not like a stock or an ETF. However, I will say this, uh, I always talk about this. I, I think that there's a lot of money on the sidelines who are used to dealing with ETFs, older money who just don't like the risk and don't like to go through exchanges and things like that. Like, just give me an ETF. I already have millions and millions of dollars. I don't need to risk it that much. You have to understand, when you make a ton of money, it's not like you have to risk yourself out there. You've already got it. So you're like, I just want this to grow on the less risk that I possibly have. What's the, what's the least risky? Give me an ETF. And that's where I think a lot of money is going to flow into. Also, as far as uh, uh, bearish crackdowns from the SEC, again, we'll see what happens with Ripple. And then the longevity of the Evergrande crisis. Uh, of course, uh, as you may or may not know, China is bailing them out as they are not printing money. They're just pretty much dumping money in the market to kind of uh, uh, save Evergrande and, the, um, and their investment property. So uh, really, when it all comes down to it, I don't see much of a bearish scenario. I mean, it could happen. Look, equities could fall, stocks could go down, um, a new black swan event could happen. Anything could happen. And that's why you have to be careful. But in all honesty, I just don't see how we can't see in the next two, three, four months, I mean, a pretty meteoric rise. Again, this is just investment opinion, not investment advice. But there is one thing that scares me, and that is this. I saw this, I just saw this, I was putting out uh, the video, I put everything together, retirement. And what we're talking about here, this was a new article from uh, Barron's, Barron's Retirement, US slips and retirement index and 682,000 plus seniors are behind on their mortgage. Why are they behind their mortgage? Because they can't pay their mortgage. And if they can't pay just the basics, a roof over their head, and uh, they can't pay for everything else, then do you think they really have a retirement fund? And you think the Social Security is going to really bail them out? I don't know where you're at, but in America, we have Social Security. And that's supposed to help people out. But people treat Social Security as the end-all, be-all. In all honesty, uh, that is not it. I want to thank uh, James from Invest Answers from uh, posting this on Twitter. And uh, I see this and I just, I get a little anxious because when we see these types of things, I mean, what's going to happen with the elderly population. I'm pretty sure it's not just America. I'm pretty sure a lot of countries have a lot of different problems with uh, retirement. So in all honesty, if you think about it, if your retirement fund is a 401k, and again, this is not investment advice whatsoever. This is, remember, crypto is very volatile. But I will say this, if you're, just look at the S&P 500 and just regular stocks, S&P 500 is, you know, pretty good, pretty safe. But if we take a look at this, and we blow this up 
over the last day, I mean, you're down 0.081. That's not the big thing I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is over the last year. Over the last year, you would have made a, and this is a pretty great year, 32%. 32%. That's cute. That's adorable. Uh, we call that a Tuesday in crypto. Now, we also go down a heck of a lot. So if that's what it is, but if you're, if you can't afford your mortgage, you can't afford other things, this isn't going to save you. And then let's take a look at five years. Oh, you would have doubled your money. That's pretty good in five years. And then max, I don't know how long max is. Uh, pretty good. Actually, this is from if you had invested all the way back here. But I guarantee you, as far as investments, you probably made a two or three extra money. And hopefully it's a lot. But in all honesty, a lot of people are probably right around here, double their money, and they're probably having a lot of problems. Anyhow, this is why I think Bitcoin, digital assets and crypto is, uh, is a prime market. And that's just for me. I can't tell you what to do. But uh, that is it for today. So look, uh, that is it uh, for right now. If you stuck with me all the way to the end, I want to say thanks so much. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Uh, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. And that's all. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.